Hey, what's up, guys? This is Zai of Third Eyes Astro. I wanted to do a cool 12th house perfection video today. And I want to really take my time, slow down with it, and show you all how to interpret the energy of a 12th house perfection and how to look at the lunar return sort of to um, complement the events or time the events of your solar return year. And I want to use someone's chart today um, who they have a very rare uh, 12th house perfection experience happening that I would say um, not the usual that you usually hear about, but something that gives others hope to sort of recognize how you can navigate uh, one of the most difficult houses by perfection. All right, so uh, the example I'm using today, this person uh, just turned 35 in August, um, August 7th. And so they enter their 12th house perfection. And from what we know about perfections, you always look at the house that you're in, you look at the house before, and you look at the house after, because the story is kind of unfolding, you know, present, past, and future of whatever's condition or circumstance. And so uh, this person just so happens to be purchasing their first home, um, and they kind of found the place at the tail end of their 11th house perfection. They were just a couple weeks before their 35th birthday. And so there's this nice little story that unfolds with it. And I'm doing my best to cover their birth data. I think I'm sure I did that for each window. But so this is their birth chart. Let's let's slow down here. Again, this person's 35. So um, on the inside wheel, you can clearly see they have a day chart. Um, the sun is in the ninth house in Leo. Uh, good stuff. And then, and then you can also note the most malefic planet, which is Mars retrograde in Capricorn, which is exalted. Let's just for essential dignities, just for the video's sake, for people who aren't familiar, um, look for the planet, look for Mars. Mars is ruled in Aries and Scorpio. Mars is exalted in Capricorn. Mars is in its detriment in Taurus and Libra. Mars is in its fall in Cancer. So yeah, we already see points there for the exaltation. So this Mars is not going to be as bad. However, it is in retrograde, so it can cause delays and challenges and obstacles as well um, when it is active. And so let's just keep that in mind or fact that is that in as we're doing interpretation. Things that might normally be one step back in uh, or one step forward and two steps back could be, let's say, uh, one step forward and a half a step back, you know, because of the exaltation of Mars and Capricorn during a Mars activated year. So just like with transits, when this the house is activated, the planetary ruler of that sign. So because Scorpio is activated for the year for this person, we're going to look at transits of Mars and we're going to look at the natal Mars. We're going to do that through the ephemeris to see if, if Mars is going to be retrograde this year for that person, because that's also going to be a factor. But because their, their natal Mars is retrograde, it is my belief that, uh, let's say, for example, you're born with Jupiter retrograde and then Jupiter goes retrograde in transit. You that's when you uh, reap the rewards or you benefit through that retrograde period. All the things that are sort of like I feel it like it's like a buildup. If you're into if you're in Aber and you're into Abraham Hicks, I feel it's like a buildup into your uh, vibrational escrow, and things are just sort of waiting to sort of burst at the seams and reward you. So, all right. So we know this this person's twelfth house is activated. The twelfth house is the house of our hidden self, isolation, retreats from the world. It rules prisons, asylums ashrams, jails. It's where we feel isolated, but it's also the darkest, the dark parts of the soul where we 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 feel imprisoned in our um, unknown or hidden self. It's also the house of our hidden enemies, which is the in within the parts of ourself we don't have access to the shadowy stuff. But this is to me the place of uh, where there can be massive spiritual enlightenment and awakening through that going to the dark, you know, abyss where there is no, you know, sort of feeling of some light and where you think that it's a dead zone and it ends up being this beautiful place where you find and rediscover yourself, especially because this person has Scorpio in the 12th house. And so, you know, to me, um, as I titled this, you know, suffering is really optional through your, your 
you know, self-transcendence through your self-discovery, through your going into and facing your, your, the shadow parts of yourself. And this person has absolutely done that. So just a little bit of backstory. Uh, the person has uh, just come into this amazing opportunity in the last year. They, they boosted their credit score from like a 480 to a 670 or something like that, or 680 um, within the 11th house perfection that they were having. And it, so it made them eligible for uh, a VA loan, which um, is, get, you know, they were able to find a home and get approved for this VA loan, which was like, everything has just gone smoothly, the whole process. And one would look at someone going into a 12th house year and go, ooh, you know, be careful, especially with Scorpio, could be debt, could be getting in over your head. You know, you could, you could think all those things, but then you, you have to look at the story before you have, that's why you have to look at the house before what was leading up to that part of the plot, you know, and this person has done so much self work through um, positive self image psychology through affirmations, through just getting rid of their um, toxic habits and traits or uh, certain addictions, and really being focusing on being here. And now I mean, they've, you know, for the first time in their adult life, they're back in school, and they have A's in their classes, whereas usually they have to drop out, they never have been able to finish, or been taken seriously by others. This is a time in their life where they're financially independent for the first time, parents aren't helping with bills. I mean, this is, I mean, it's so major to see that transformation, the work that they did in that 11th house year, that has now sort of, um, built up into this 12th house so that they can face themselves. It's almost like they are equipped for the energy of the 12th house because they've already started the work in the 11th. Um, so yeah, Scorpio traditionally is going to be debt, taxes, and inheritances. It's all of the, you know, the shared resources stuff. It's a, to me, it's the, the place where we have to, uh, really like look at, hold on a second, the planning of our investments and how it impacts other people or how it will either we can sink or swim through our investments and so this is the largest investment this person is taking on but the, the deal it was such a sweet deal the way in which they got at this house it was like someone else's loss became their gain and to me that's a little bit of pluto in the something swooping in <laughs> a phoenix rising at the last minute someone else was already purchasing this home and they ended up backing out at the last minute um, I guess something fell through and they weren't able to get the home. And the very day this person's real uh, connected with the realtor and the realtor, this popped up on her radar and they were able to right, right away go and see the place. And they went, oh, it's mine. And he described to me how he used manifestation from the moment he went to see the home. He looked around and he goes, he goes, that car that he wants to buy, his like dream car, you know, 2021 or whatever, jeep that he really wants was parked right across the street at the neighbor's house and he goes wow there's my car and he's walking around the house with the realtor and he gets outside and he goes well my neighbor's got my car and then and the realtor goes well, you mean your neighbor we just this is your first time the house the first house you're viewing what do you mean your neighbors he's like oh it's mine i'm already claiming it you know and just that was it there was no other conversation about it well sure as sugar everything like just one after the other opportunity has come through from approval, uh, getting the house appraised and, and the house being worth more, 5,000 more than the um, offer price. So he's already getting a $5,000 gain. His housing cost or closing cost is only like a thousand bucks because there's a little bit of work that needs to be done, like minor things. And the current owner is going to put that towards the closing cost. And so he only has to come up with a thousand dollars and everything has just, and he's got fixed interest through the VA loan. One thing after another has worked out significantly. So traditionally, I wanted to share this story because when we look at 12th house years, we, people dread it. Astrologers will dread it. They're like, oh, here we go. Here comes depression. Here comes this. Here comes, you know, the doubt, the fear, the isolation. I'm going to lose friends. You think about those things. This is someone who has already cut off because of the work he did in the 11th house here, and we see K2, um, the south node of the moon in the 11th house, K2 sort of strips away to bring spiritual enlightenment, you know, and this person did this work to strip away the dead superficial friendships that could not carry over into this um, more focused, more driven uh, 12th house year in Scorpio. 
And because of that, they're they're very careful of who they surround themselves with. They're very careful of who will be what they invest their energy, time, and resources into. Um, just a super growth as far as maturity spurt in the last year. And we can see how that's going to come into play as this person goes into a first house perfection in their 36th year with Saturn and Uranus here, um, which will also coincide with their progressed moon entering into Capricorn next year too. But we'll maybe have time to talk more about that later. So it's not always bad. You know, it's, it's, did you do the work in your 11th house year to make the to make the most out of that 12th house year i have another example of someone who had a really great 12th house year and it started out really crappy so they were going into their 12th house year this person i think is like a realtor in minnesota and at the start of them going into the year they broke up with their uh, child's father and so there's the loss right there there's some sort of sacrifice right that happens but then as the year unfolds, yeah, it's isolating. It's, you know, uncertain. You, you feel lonely that those things, feelings naturally occur. And then all of a sudden the person starts selling more houses in real estate than any other year that they've had. It's been, and they bought a really nice car. And I got to see them unfold this 12th house going into myself, uh, you know, uncertain, afraid. It's like going into the wilderness alone and you hope you have everything you need. And in that sort of willingness to, um, you know, to leap or willingness to uh, face your deepest fear, you come out of it on the other side, this enlightened person, and, you know, maybe some coins in your pocket too, depending on certain aspects. Um, so with this person's chart, because Mars is active, we look at the natal Mars exalted in Capricorn. Mars in Capricorn is like a double-edged sword. First of all, it's, this is like super ambitious and driven workaholic. Um, you know, this person is, is picked up so much over time. He is, you know, with his, his job and he's also cut back on all the things, the, the, um, pleasantries that he used to be in engaged in like that took up consumed a lot of his energy he started meal prepping to save money i mean just things you do to ensure that you get what you want now uh mars and capricorn is also like re restructuring like planning you know it loves to know uh, to have to take action towards plans. And so this person has like, they looked at their vision board that they made in their 10th house year that has it, everything on there has unfolded. They put on there a house with at least two levels and a fenced in yard. Um, and I think they put like three bedrooms, everything they wanted, they have gotten from their vision board in this, um, in this year or going into this year, even down to the credit score that they wanted, you know? And so don't, I'd say, don't yuck people's yum, you know, don't be so uh, practical and, and serious that you miss out on what looks like fluff or what looks like child's play to uh, access of your ability to either to manifest the life you want, to dream, to vision, you know, um, to, to allow and invite a change of circumstance, a change of tide. Otherwise, you'll go into a 12th house year and you'll expect the worst and you'll get the worst, you know? But this person kind of, when I, even I just talked to him yesterday, he called me, he was in tears. He was so happy because he found out that the, the loan uh, has, has been approved. And so his closing date is the 26th of the month. And he's like, he fell to his knees. Like, he's like, this is the biggest thing he's ever done. And it's an investment in himself, himself you know? Um, so let's look at how we would sort of take that theme of the year, knowing that we're entering the 12th house, knowing that Mars is in Capricorn in the second house natally, and the transiting Mars as it goes around will also kind of play into this person's year and unravel. So if you've been following me or coming to any of the classes for a while, you know that when I look at solar returns, and just for the sake of this recording, I'm using Placidus, but... Um, Equal signs is, is, is great too for interpreting solar returns, just because you want to kind of capture where the houses are falling within the natal chart. But Placidus is working well for this particular circumstance. So um, for the year, the person's birthday was on August 7th. They are having a cancer rising year. 
Okay. And the cancer is what? Home, real estate, nesting. It's, uh, you know, our nurturing capacity. It's family. This is a big deal. This person has reached out to their grandmother and said, grandma, I'm putting a rocking chair on the porch for you. So when you come visit me, you can hang out. I got a room. Uh, your bedroom's going to be set up. So it's facing the front of the house. So you can look out the window because, you know, that's what grandma likes to do back home. So it's all about making like being so proud to like be the first in the family to do something different, you know, or to make the mother especially proud or the grandmother proud. And we can see that sort of playing out. Uh, the ascendant of the solar return is falling in the natal seventh house of partnerships, one-on-one -on -one interactions, contracts, you know. So we we see the exchange of um, sort of this contract that's that's happening. The moon is the ruler of the year. The moon is at Regulus, you know. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. The Regulus is here. The moon is at 29 Cancer. My apologies. So the moon is in the second house of um, earned income, possessions, the housing would be a, a, a sort of possession. And then the moon would be, you know, a home. So you can see the energy of a purchase of a house playing out here. Uh, it's at that last degree of cancer. So cusping, um, you know, Leo a little bit here, the emotional intensity, this person is not a crier, you know, at all in, by, by far, because of one, they got moon in Virgo. So <laughs> it's a more practical, methodical, logical sort of moon and emotional response to things. Um, but this person called me, like I said, very emotional about this is a huge deal for them because there are certain fears. Yeah. I mean, they've to this, to this point till, excuse me, let me not say that to their 34th year, they lived very like by the, you know, just by the seat of their pants, like flying by, trying to get through life, just head barely above the water, in a lot of debt, owing, you know, parents and had not really feeling responsible enough to handle their bills in a way that they could function um, in the world. And for everything to just turn around through the use of incorporating some positive self-image psychology, manifestation. You know, I remember when we first started doing affirmations together and they were kind of like hesitant. They didn't, you know, they're not, they're not really as a believer or, a, you know, more skeptical, I would say. And I said, just do it anyway, because your subconscious feeling nature will absorb it and it'll come to pass. Just like Abraham Hicks says, your mic is always on. So even if you don't believe it, if you think it's ridiculous, just do it because it does work. So anyway, I, I go on a tangent there. You know how much I love that topic, but um, we can see as far as themes of the year. Well, the second house is falling of the solar return is falling in the natal eighth house. And the eighth house is what? It's those investments. It's debt. This is a huge loan. You know, this person's like, I think it's a $310,000 loan or something like that. Um, that's major. And coming up with closing costs and, and shopping around for homeowners insurance and all the different things. And then looking at adding on uh, extension to the home, like a garage, which you can see. And, and as we get deeper into this, you know, um, looking at the year ahead and looking at the lunar return and all that. Well, pay attention to the ascendant of the solar return chart. Okay. Pay attention to your ascendant of your solar return chart, because whatever month of the lunar return chart. Like if you were to print out or look at all your lunar returns for the year ahead after your birthday, the months in which you have the solar return ascendant matching the lunar return ascendant. That means if the solar return ascendant is in cancer and the lunar return ascendant is in cancer, those are gonna be the months where the theme of the year is activated. The theme of the year is happening. I've seen it over and over again. I've done case study and in my own life, I kind of anticipate the theme of my year to occur on or around those months. So another thing to notice, I want you to pay attention to the fourth house of this solar return chart because the fourth house is traditionally the end of the matter. It's really the end and the beginning of the matter because it's the natural house of cancer. Cancer is the container of life, the water memory. It's that, that sort of water sitting, the womb. It's the first home or the container, the vehicle of the spirit in essence. And so cancer is, this fourth house is gonna be how the matter is gonna end and how it begins. We got Venus and Virgo in the fourth house of home. We see right there, this is all the little details of 
you know, getting this house um, uh, uh, signed, getting the contract done and getting into this new home. This is all the fine teeth combing. And Venus, you know, the way it's working out for this person, it almost feels to them, it feels kind of surreal, but they don't, they're not acknowledging all the work they've been doing behind the scenes. And that's why that 12th house is saying, you know, again, suffering is optional. Pain could be inevitable. Suffering really is optional. If you can acknowledge how far you've come, if you can acknowledge what, any little thing that's going well and focus your intention on that, that's the behind the scenes work. So quick example to go back to the 12th house a little bit here. So in, in a 12th house perfection, let's say someone was like in prison, right? And there's nothing in within their circumstance that they can do to take themselves out of prison. They'd have to go as general as possible to focus on, you know, any little thing that brings them joy. God, they received mail today. They were able to read a, a book that's available to them and they're really enjoying it. They're able to meditate and, and invest in their spirituality. They're able to reflect and do, you know, tiny little things. That's to me, that's what the 12th house year is telling us to do. And if you do it with gracefully, as this person is doing, we see the rewards already happening. So now let's Let's take it a step further. So the birthday has happened now. We're in we're in August 814. And so uh, coinciding with their birthday, they just had a lunar return, which in the meaning the moon's return to where it was at the time of their birth. Well, look at that. Their lunar return is they have a cancer rising <laughs> for their lunar return. And so we see the theme of the year, of, you know, showing us that this month is major. And if this person were to look at every month from August all the way to next August, and they would look for the cancer rising months, those would be the months when they have, like, say, for example, I know they told me they're going to be adding a garage extension to this home, doing some control, you know, renovation. Those would be the months when those themes would come up for them around the renovation of the home and anything dealing with regards to the home. Um, so there it is again, look at the Venus of the lunar return chart, conjunct the IC. Very cool um, for us to be able to pinpoint it because with lunar return charts, you kind of have to like, you know, take a little stab in the dark at the where the energy is going to go. But this is one of those where you have a clear indication. Um, Mars, the moon, the, the, the moon is going to be the ruler of this lunar return chart. And the moon is in the third house, you know, the tiny little details of the contract, the tiny sorting out the little details. Uh, Mars is action and drive, right? This is where there you can see the action going into the art of the art of the deal, negotiating and different things like that. Um, also, it's I, I, I did note yesterday I was looking at this Mercury uh, is is quite close to Regulus. It's I would say conjunct Regulus, the fixed star of fame and notoriety. Mercury is the ruler of this moon, this person's moon. And so the they kind of feel have been uh, saying that I just feel really lucky. You know, they are the talk of their family right now. This, you know, their whole family is like, how's the house? What's going on with the house? You know, it's a big deal for them. And they just want to come out on top. They want to feel like, you know, nothing, nothing can go wrong and keep their focus on making sure that everything goes right. You know? And I said, surrendering because the 12th house is about surrendering and if you surrender to the idea that divine order is in order and you are of it and in it, it's going to go well anyway. You know, there's not a, whether it's this house or something better, you just invite that energy in. And he mentioned that, you know, he talked to his mom about, she was just kind of saying, you know, be careful. You never, you don't, it might not work. And, it, and just kind of more pessimistic. And you can see with the moon in Virgo, we tend to have a more critical mother or mother figure. And he'd had to say to her, like, if you're not going to say anything positive, you know, don't call me. He's like, if this house doesn't work out, then, then uh, that's fine. Another one will. I'm expanding my sort of um, horizons. I'm seeing differently than I was seeing before and seeing that it's possible. Um, and I guess I didn't add to the backstory. The, another reason why this whole housing thing is so significant is because this person, um, right before they discovered that they were able to even buy a home, but, you know, they'd never tried because their credit was so bad for so many years. They were like apartment hunting and in the Georgia area. And they'd called me and was like, just frustrated. And so we did some affirmations together 
um, read some Florence Goldshin and Catherine Ponder, and there's some specific examples of people looking for houses and affirmations they use to sort of settle that restless, fearful energy and then invite um, divine solutions in. And um, they were like, I, you know, I got two pit bulls. I don't know how I'm gonna get, gonna get a place in time. The rent is so high. And I said, I had a friend who had just, uh, her mother had just found a place down there. I said, reach out to this realtor. And it worked out so magically. Like, you know, the same day they got approved um, for a rent to own, they ended up going, the person went, why don't you just use the VA loan? It's so much cheaper. And they went, I didn't know that was an option. So uh, it's almost like uh, when I look at this Mercury here, it's like someone um, uh, inter interjecting on behalf of the king, like a messenger, <laughs> you know, interjecting some sort of opportunity or some sort of solution if the person would be still and, and, you know, allow. And this is what it, to me, it's like, when you see all this stacked to here in Virgo, it's like, don't be so busy trying to do that you forget to, you know, allow, just surrender into some things and trust that you've done the work, you know. Um, but this was cool because, again, this is a prime example of the theme of the year happening in the, for the theme of the month. And so, simple way that you can do this with your chart look at your perfection here look for your age you know then look for the house before and the house after so let's say you're going you're turning let's say you're 36 years old you just turned 36 or you're going into your 36th year look at this house and look at the house after because those themes are going to kind of play the story out you know um you know give you clues about how the year is going to continue unfolding for you. So let's see here. Okay, so this is another thing I wanted to, to note. Uh, so the lunar opposition is when the moon is in the ex opposition opposite sign. For me, the lunar oppositions have been when the, the event for the month is gonna happen on the day of the lunar opposition, usually give or take 48 hours. It's almost like a trigger point for that natal moon. Uh, and so, that opposition will show you when the event will transpire. Well, this person's closing date is the 26th of, of August, right? So fitting. Well, this for the lunar opposition, they have a Gemini rising month. And so Mercury conjunct Mars in Virgo is the, the little details in the fourth house of home. We'll look at the sun, Mercury, Mars, all within the fourth house of the lunar return. Well, look at the degree of the sun right? Conjunct Regulus, where if we look back here, look at Mercury, right? Conjunct Regulus. So this all, this is like Mercury kind of is like sending that, I say this a lot and sending your messenger ahead. Mercury is kind of, we're combing out the little details and then the sun comes through and you sort of, uh, it plays out the, the perfect self-expression or the perfect expression of this event or theme for this person. So very cool way to do this um, for yourself. Look at your, your, your chart and whole signs. Look for your perfection year. Look for the planet that rules that sign, what it's doing by transit, what it's doing in your natal chart. Then look at your solar return chart for the year. Look for the ascendant of the solar return chart. Look for the planetary ruler. Look for the house the sun is in. Um, and look at, I mean, obviously you want to read it like any other chart, but those are going to be your key, just identifying and pinpointing themes. Then you want to look at your lunar return chart for the month, you know, that cycle. Look for the ascendant, look for the planetary ruler, look for the position of the moon in that chart and just stack, make a little um, layered uh, sort of, uh, maybe fold a paper in three and go, okay, year, uh, excuse me, go perfection, solar, and then lunar and see what's happening and what themes are sort of um, complementing each other versus maybe contradicting each other, you know, but it's a good way to practice to do for yourself so that you're not getting sideswiped by the energy of the year and, you know, you're just aware of how things are playing out so you can maximize that 12th house year if that's what you're entering or you're exiting. All right. Thank y'all. Take care now.